PCS X2 is the premier PlayStation 2 emulator, and it's something that I've talked a bit about before, but the video I made is getting pretty old, so I figured I was going to do an update on it. I'm basically going to talk about PCS X2, the emulator itself, uh, what problems still exist with the emulators, what kind of updates have there been since a year ago when I made my last video, what's going on with it, and that's basically what this video is going to be about. Now, granted, I'm not going to talk about literally every change that has happened since last year because there's a lot of them. I'm just going to go over some of the ones that I saw looking through their progress reports, some of the ones that I thought were interesting that were major, and I'm mainly going to talk about those. So I apologize in advance if I miss something that you want me to talk about, but yeah, this is just going to go over some of the major improvements and some of the problems that still exist within PCSX2. So without any more rambling about, let's get right into it. Now PCSX2 of course is already an established emulator and it's been around for quite some time now. So it's well known that most games run on it just fine. And in fact, according to their website, 97.9% .9 of PS2 games are considered fully playable. Now granted, fully playable does not mean it runs 100% perfect, a lot of these games might still have some minor audio or graphical issues, things like that, but uh, they all run good enough to play all the way through them. So I'm gonna spend more time talking about uh, things that still need work, right? Now as far as games that are completely unplayable, there really isn't much at this point. The only two like notable titles that come to mind are Final Fantasy XI and EverQuest, and obviously both of these are unplayable simply for the fact that they're online only games and the servers for these games don't exist anymore. Uh, there are a few other unplayable games, but uh, looking through the list of them, I'm gonna be honest, I've never heard of any of these games. I don't know what they are, so I'm not really gonna mention it because I don't think it's really that big of a deal. So I'm gonna move on and talk about some of the problems with the emulator itself. I'm gonna be talking more about issues that might affect the emulator as a whole or multiple games. So that's mainly what this is gonna be about. It's gonna be about those types of problems that still exist in the emulator as of the latest dev build. Now do note that the dev builds aren't quite as stable as the final release. Sometimes things that were okay before get broken. So some of these problems that I talk about might be fixed by the time 1.7.0 inevitably comes out. One fairly common issue across multiple games is that controllers apparently can continue to vibrate endlessly after they receive a rumble input and they just never stop. And apparently this is a fairly common issue with DualShock 4 controllers, you know, PS4 controllers, and supposedly may have something to do with a driver issue. Now whether this is actually the fault of the emulator or not, kind of debatable, don't really know, but it is a fairly common, minorly annoying problem. Another issue has to do with CDVD latency. Basically with this one, if your games are being run off of storage that's slow, like let's say a 5400 RPM laptop hard drive, you may experience stuttering in some games whenever the game has to load. Now granted, once again, this is something that's maybe not that much of a fault of PCSX2, but it is notable to talk about because if you, on the off chance that you are, say, trying to run PCSX2 on like an older laptop or something like that, and you have like slow storage, or say you're running it off of like an external drive, whatever, if you have slow storage that you're trying to run this off of, you might experience some stuttering issues. That might be what's causing it if you notice those things. Another issue some people report is the inability to boot PS2 games from an actual disc when you have PCSX2 open. And this is something that worked before and apparently is now broken with the dev build. So obviously something got mangled up in there. I'm sure this is one they'll have fixed fairly soon. But yeah, if you're using the dev build, uh, you might not be able to boot your games from an actual PS2 disc. 
Now, outside of these emulator-wide issues, there's not a lot of problems with games. Like I said before, mostly just minor graphical audio issues. Annoying stuff, sure, but not game-breaking. Mainly, there still exist problems with uh, things like resolution scaling in some games. For example, like Crash to Insanity, lighting and shadow problems in other games as well, a couple misplaced textures here and there. Sometimes there's things like uh, FMV problems, like problems with the in-game movies in various games as well. This is something that's well known. But uh, outside of that, those are most of the issues you're going to be encountering with the games you're running in PCSX2, and that's probably going to be it. Any other issues can usually be gotten around with various hacks or just messing with settings inside of the emulator, and that's pretty much it. Now, as for positives, when I last talked about PCSX2, the last released version was 1.6.0, and I believe 1.6.0 is still the current version as of now. However, there has been much progress, like I said, made to the dev builds of PCSX2, and it's safe to say that these changes are probably going to make their way into the release version 1.7.0 at some point in the future, so we're going to get into that a little bit, alright? First of all, there's been some GSDX improvements, uh, such as per pixel alpha blending implementation, which improves shadow and lighting effects in some games. I think uh, they posted a couple comparison photos, I'll throw those up on the screen for you to see. Broken videos and FMVs have been fixed in quite a few games, uh, namely a whole bunch of EA games and also Quake 3 apparently. Frame times have been made much more consistent by tightening tolerances on the frame limiter, substantially smoothing out frame pacing in some games. CRC hacks have been removed from a bunch of games because they're no longer needed. Some of the notable ones include, say, like Sly 2 and 3, Star Wars Force Unleashed, and God of War 2, just to name a few of them. A lot of graphics options have also been renamed, reconfigured, and rearranged as well. Uh, I think mainly it looks like just to make options more clear and also fix some GUI problems as well that existed. Anisotropic filtering was fixed when using OpenGL. Apparently this is something that's been broken for a long time, so yeah. And like I said, these are just a few of the long laundry list of fixes that have been going on over the past, I don't know, about six months or so with PCSX2. If you want to see the whole list of changes and things they've done, the quarterly progress reports are available on the PCSX2 website if you want to read through all of them. Like I said before, I just talked about a few of the larger general changes. I didn't really go into game specific things because number one, there wasn't a whole lot of that, and number two, to read through everything, it would just become a very long video. And once again, I do apologize if I missed something important or something you wanted me to talk about. I'm sorry, I can always make another video, I suppose. But like I said, that's because there's been a lot of little tweaks and changes here and there. So overall, the improvements to PCSX2 have certainly been more incremental than they have been revolutionary, but the thing is there's a lot of nice minor improvements and to be honest this is something that's expected when you're looking at an emulator that's already as mature and well polished as PCSX2. You're not going to see those huge, you know, leaps from version to version where you get major improvements across the board. It's more like they're tweaking and changing things here and there to make the experience better, slowly fixing bugs and stuff like that. It's it, it's already such a good emulator that they're really just polishing it more. That's all they're doing. And of course progress is always going to be made, but as time goes on these tweaks are going to get more and more specific and minor because like I said honestly there's not that much to improve upon at least when you compare it to emulators for other consoles like, you know, say for the PS3 or for the Switch, you know, those obviously have a lot more work to do because they're newer. Honestly, the PS2 is my absolute favorite console of all time and PCSX2 is one of my favorite emulators of all time, period. And I'm honestly really looking forward to all the changes they will make in the future as the emulator gets even better and better. 
that's going to do it for today, folks. I hope you enjoyed this quick little update on PCSX2 and what's been going on. If you like my content, don't forget to like and subscribe. There's going to be more coming in the future, and I'll see you in the next one. Have a good one.